this lecture series, as well as some of the more recent ones we've been doing, uh, we realize that a lot of what is best about Birmingham is in what we remember about it, what people experienced. And uh, so we're finding more and more that this kind of a format where people have a chance to get together, maybe share some memories, is um, a really fortunate way for us to get a sense of something that is gone. Because as I said already, the museum is about preserving some of this information, making it available in the future. The Peabody's, as everyone in this room knows, or I don't think you'd be here, just had an incredible impact uh, and the development of Birmingham and some things about Birmingham that are tangible and some things that are not tangible. So all I want to do is spend a little bit of time sharing some of the early history of the family so you understand what the roots of that family are and how it came about to uh, the branch of the family that um, opened Peabody's Restaurant. <laughs> I want you to, <laughs> I want you to uh, study and remember this family tree. <laughs> the reason it's there is to show you just how complex and big this family was. Uh, way too hard to take in easily, but I have two colors. I, I hope they show up. There's like a greenish and there's like a pinkish color. Those are the two sides of the family that I'm just going to uh, touch on. Um, the uh, amber or, or kind of greenish yellow color is the James Peabody line. No, I, it looks more pink, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, and the green is the Lyman Peabody line. So you can see in the different generations where those people show up. So the way I think about it, it was things kind of came together when the Peabody's came to town, but we don't exactly know what date that was. Um, we know that by 1870, and that's like within the period right after the Civil War, by that point, um, L.B. Peabody, Lyman, one of the brothers, had already come to Birmingham, and here's a, a map showing what Birmingham was like around that time. It was a tiny little village, right? surrounded by all these farms. He was already operating a dry goods store by 1870, according to the census. His brother James also was here by 1870, um, and we don't know exactly when, but around that time, he had purchased a farm, this property right here, and this is Gilbert Lake, so you, you know that uh, that property right now would be, you know, very, very, very valuable. But at the time, it was farmland. In fact, a lot of farms right after the Civil War were being, were, uh, they, they had dropped in value. So it was fairly easy to acquire large tracts of land in, in this part of Michigan. And uh, the brothers came from New York, and so they both set up shop. It was like the country mouse and the city mouse a little bit. Um, James Henry was out in the country uh, operating a farm while Lyman Burt settled in the village and opened a dry goods store. Here's LB. So I just want to talk a little bit about his descendants a little bit because they are part of Birmingham also. And often people wonder, what are, what are the two branches of the family? Um, so this photo is from about 1890. Uh, so L.B. Peabody and um, opened, he had actually, a, it seems like a couple different stores, but the one that most people think of if they know about uh, the Peabody General Store is this one, which um, he moved into in 1888 right on Woodward Ave. Well, it was called Saginaw at the time. Um, here's an interesting couple of photos. Here's the front of the store again with family members. This is also the Peabody store, so you can kind of see how it was situated on the street. And interestingly, in the 1880s, so after he had been here, you know, almost 15 or 20 years, the population of Birmingham was 
about 750 people. Uh, there were 36 businesses, according to the official count that we have. There were two mills, there were two blacksmiths, 10 dry goods or grocery or produce um, stores, 10. Two harness makers, two tailors, two boot and shoe merchants, three milliners, and three physicians. So you can see that operating a dry goods store, there was an awful lot of competition. There were an awful lot, but there must have been a huge market for it also. And he thrived and prospered, and it was the LB Peabody uh, family associated with building this house, the Peabody Mansion, which still exists today, uh, very characteristic. You all kind of went, oh, you recognize it. Even though it's a restaurant now, it's, a, it's been an icon in downtown Birmingham forever. It was actually built in 1878. Okay, so the other branch of the family, the one that relates to the restaurant, is the James Henry and Ellen Peabody family. So back to the Gilbert Lake area, here's a different map. Um, I love maps, and so I get a chance to show you a couple different ones. This is uh, moved forward in time. This map, compared to the last one I showed you, is about 25 years later. Um, so here's Gilbert Lake again, and you can see Mrs. E.F. Peabody is noted because James actually died in 1893, and this map was produced about three years later. So this tract of land was the Peabody property uh, along the lake there. And this little, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little building that represents a schoolhouse that was on, the, on that property. Now, almost 20 years later, Ellen F. Peabody is still owning that same tract of land. Um, and you can make the schoolhouse out, it was still there. So not too much had changed in all of this time in all that farmland. And so there's this long, steady um, uh, care of the land and the uh, raising of crops and produce, it didn't change dramatically. And um, then things started shifting around as progress came to Birmingham and Southeast Michigan. <clears throat> it began to dawn on the family that they were sending their produce down to Detroit. How that was done in the, at the time was you'd load your wagons up and your horses would take the produce to the Saginaw Trail or Saginaw Road or Woodward. And uh, every, every day that you were gonna go down to Detroit and you would take your uh, wagon loads of produce uh, very early in the morning down to Detroit, sell it down at the market and then come back home. And that would go on over and over again. So most of the market uh, for produce that was in excess of what you needed for your family would be sold in Detroit. Um, <clears throat> it began to seem logical to move uh, part of the operation closer to the Saginaw Trail. So in 1928, Stanley, who was James's son, purchased a building on Woodward, south of Maple, to sell that produce in town, in a, a, to make it easier to, to uh, send the produce back and forth to Detroit. Now, by 1928, we were getting motorized also, but what you see in this picture is the building. You see the outline of the barn, you know, the horses. It had been used, and this is important for what happened later. It had previously been used as a grist mill, as a sawmill, uh, it stored lumber, it had all kinds of different materials stored on the site for many, 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 many years. The produce that was being raised was apples. Right. And people would stop in and, you know, shoot the breeze. Okay, so Stan's son uh, was Jim Peabody. I don't know if you guys have seen this high school photo, but I thought it was great um, to include. So he graduated in 1937 from Baldwin High School. 
He went to the army, served in the army, World War II, met his wife Wilma there, and they are buried uh, at Greenwood Cemetery. And uh, Wilma was a captain in the army. And Wilma um, uh, was deceased in 2009, and, and Jim actually died in 2001. So um, they were together a really long time. Um, here's a couple other photos we had in our collection just to help you see the change over time. So this photo on the right, this is Peabody's up there. This is Woodward, the boulevard, right here. And what you see this way is Maple. Um, so you can tell that there's a building next to it between Peabody's and the corner, but it's kind of a smaller building. It's, you know, it's not, it's lower, I mean. And then here's another photo, and you can see by the age of the car that it's, you know, f similar time frame. And so the barn had got, you know, whitewashed and, you know, windows and made into a market, uh, but it still functioned, like you were saying. It was still a place where you stopped it and you picked up what you needed, you visited with people, and uh, you went on with your day. So this is a photo that um, we have in our collection from, uh, we're not sure, it's about 1960. You can tell uh, that cigarettes are being sold, you know, right out in the open, very popular item, I'm sure. But uh, Peabody's began to sell a little of everything, right? I mean, that was part of what they did. And Jim was involved with the store forever, from the time, really, that he got, uh, got back from the Army. Um, all the way until through the process of it becoming a restaurant. Then in 1975, Jim and Susan opened Peabody's Restaurant. And this is actually from the Birmingham Eccentric, and I know it's not the greatest photo, but one of the things that really stands out is um, how, first of all, that it's a family enterprise, but secondly, Susan, you know, looks fairly young to be engaged in this pretty big uh, business decision. The, the big day was January 9th of 1980. Um, and there are a lot of stories to go with that night. So I'd like to hold off until we can pass the mic around so those can be captured. Um, but I just want to show you the images and uh, they're, I'm sure, devastating even now to look at them and just remember you know what what it was like how awful but not to be deterred the grinning Jim there he is happy to be uh, getting back on on track and um, I realized when I was looking at this photo that um, it's in a trailer and the trailer is on the site I believe isn't it because you can see and you can see the bricks and it's a bus, okay. And you can see the bricks in the back. Um, and I'm not sure who the people in the picture are exactly. Susan in the back and Barbara. Oh, okay. Um, and then, really, the barn. Although the barn was gone, the decision was made to restore it, re reconstruct it. Um, it was always part of Peabody's not just brand, but just what they were all about, what, what mattered to them. And so it may, only made sense to just bring that back, only maybe a little bit bigger and a little bit better. So when it reopened, it was July 4th. And, uh, you know, it was bigger, better, sparkly, and people couldn't wait to get back into Peabody's. Um, I in sharing this photo, this photo we took uh, from the museum the, the, um, right before the restaurant actually closed. Uh, they, the, uh, the sisters offered that we could take a table and a couple of chairs to the museum, which we have, and we have them on display. Um, but one of the things I always was appreciative of about Peabody's, being a, the historical type and everything, is that they also respected tradition. And these tables, and you remember, they all had the uh, historic photos and postcards and, um, 
placed right down into the table. I mean, I think Peabody's cared about the past, even though they were very firmly in the present. And um, we still, I think, it, it, when we think about Peabody's, I think that's part of what every person at every table would see when they sat down is Birmingham's past, even if they were there to have a business lunch or whatever. And uh, that's something, of course, we love. And we have, we, um, you know, I will show you in a little bit, but we currently have a display at the museum for our Birmingham before and after exhibit that has uh, several items from Peabody's, including the table. And we do invite people to sit down at the table. So, so you can, I mean, those comfortable chairs, um, they're, you know, they've had a lot of people sitting in them that it's not gonna hurt for people to sit down and remember what it's like there, to sit at Peabody's. Here are a couple of mementos. We don't have tons of them in our collection, but we do have the last menu. We have the, um, the uh, matchbook there with the iconic drawing of the um, restaurant, the barn shape. And then I have a few f uh, photos about the, the last couple of years. So this shot, um, which came from Peabody's Facebook page, which is still up and has some great photos, so I, I borrowed a few there. And I, I thought you might, um, it is shocking to see the cavity between the buildings where Peabody used to be, Peabody's used to be. But in, in part, that site has, um, because of the history of the building prior to Peabody's acquiring it, there are um, things with the site that uh, qualify as a brownfield development. So it has some, um, or, or it did have some pollution and so forth relating back to that early history as a sawmill. Um, and so it's, it's part of the past and part of the site even, even today, I guess you could say. And another photo that, of course, is very sad, but part of the story of, of the building, too, is uh, when it was taken down. Some of the food, um, again, at, uh, there was, there's still are some food uh, photos online that I just thought I would share with you, even though you've seen it, you've eaten it, you've been there, um, you remember it, but, mm. and. Right, their signature, in a way, their signature dessert. It doesn't even need a title. And then the cookbook, um, a couple people already asked where is it and how to get it. Uh, it's available at um, the Varsity Shop if you want to walk in and, and pick it up, it's $20. You can also order it online for $20. Um, you just search Peabody's Cookbook in your Google and it'll take you right to the page. And Kate Cordes is the author, and so she's the great-granddaughter? Yeah, okay. Now, this is what we're doing at the museum at the moment. We have some things on display. Um, just to point out, I know the photo's a little small, but we have the table and chairs out, a copy of the menu, not the actual menu, but a, a, but a copy of it. On the wall, we have, these are the historic photos that were put into the tabletops. So you can come and see them on the wall. Then we have some other material here about Peabody's through the years, um, contents from the, of the menu, other stories and so forth. We also, for those of you who are genealogy buffs, we have the Peabody family tree showing Lyman and his line, and you can walk over and figure out who's married to who and who had kids with whom. Um, and we also have a case with some of the last things, like we do have sets of silverware. We have um, some of the other items that came from the restaurant that now are precious because they are historical, but the silverware is not silverware that you, you could never find anywhere else, but it's, it's our Peabody silverware, so that makes it special. Um, and wanted to say personally thank you to the sisters who all came to be here tonight, and I know they did that 
not just for a slideshow, but because they wanted to see all of you. And you're a big part of their lives um, and what they, what they experienced here, what they always gave. Yes, absolutely. Um, but we also know that some of you have stories, uh, favorite memories of Birmingham, uh, the story of, you know, closing the night of the fire. Is that, is that your story? Maybe you can start off. I'm going to pass, <laughs> I'm going to pass the uh, microphone to you. Thank you. My name's Dick Christie, and it, as you, uh, the girls mentioned, my father was responsible for getting involved with the family back in 1974 originally, but um, planning to build the restaurant. And as you alluded to, we uh, built that in 75. And I soon after that was asked by Jim Peabody, who I still call <laughs> probably the biggest gentle giant I ever met in my life. <laughs> you know, he was just an absolutely wonderful, wonderful person. But um, we built the restaurant and I soon became manager. Left for a while, came back, and then to your point, the, the night I'll never forget is uh, coming back home and I wasn't in bed for 20 minutes and the phone rang and uh, I answered the phone and they said that uh, this was the Birmingham uh, Police Department. We need you to come up to the restaurant. We need to get in, there's a fire. Well, I live south of town, coming up Woodward and I was just at Link, or excuse me, at Adams when I saw the uh, flame starting to break through on the south side of the restaurant. and. The oil, the furnace and everything was at the north end upstairs. And just as I pulled in, Jim Peabody pulled in on the north side in his Bonneville, or his uh, red uh, convertible. And we both were there for probably a half hour watching it and everything. And at that point, he had had a conversation with the fire department. And he said, come on, let's take a walk. And he and I walked uptown. I remember walking by City Hall, going by the varsity shop, and then coming back around. And Gordon Graham, if you remember the announcer, or the uh, um, uh, television personality with Channel 7, tracked us down. And I stood off to the side, and he interviewed Mr. Peabody at that point. And he said, I've only got a few things to say, you know, that uh, obviously this is a terrible loss. but." I absolutely am going to rebuild this restaurant and we're going to get back up and going in a year's time and to your point it was done in like six months so but th that's just one of the neat stories. It w turned out to be the um, if you want me to share this story. There was an oil, at the time, the restaurant had an oil um, tank down in the south end of the basement that fed the furnace through the restaurant basement up into the office area upstairs on the second floor. And the actual oil line separated from the furnace at that point, but the pump did not stop pumping and it kept pumping straight fuel oil in. Is that right, Susan? I believe. Yep, so, <laughs> but that, but another great, great memory, and then I'll cut it off, is uh, it, back in 74, uh, the time I really, really got to know their dad was uh, we tore down a couple of barns, one in Fremont, Ohio, um, that was brought up here, and then a little barn just north of uh, Lapeer that Woody, a tree trimmer, and Charlie Olin, an old family name here in town too, were responsible in finding a barn, and we actually dismantled those barns, uh, not only in 75, but also again in 79, Jim and I and Roger were driving back and forth way north of Bad Axe, literally and he was an animal <laughs> tearing these barns apart piece by piece and we and, and not only the the wood on the outside but dismantling all the barn beans themselves and brought them back down here um, to reconstruct the restaurant so but um, my final point is I, you know 
I look back and <laughs> some of my uh, greatest memories are with the family. The three girls are like my older sisters and there's a lot of love in our family for this family. So Birmingham has got uh, a, a great, great family and uh, a family that will always go down in history, I'm sure. So. Thank you. Yep. Someone who wants to raise their hand to maybe share a memory or comment with the microphone? Anybody? Yes. And could you say your name before you speak up? So please. Thanks. Jennifer Nancaro Furdock. And back in the day, I can't tell you how many years ago. No, I don't want to stand up. Peabody's was the place you could not get a job at because nobody left Peabody's. <laughs> nobody left because they loved working there so much and they had so much fun and they made great money and there was always an hour wait for dinner. And I was working down at Red Coat Tavern in Royal Oak and I thought, well, what by the, what, just go and put my application in. And then they called me and he hired me. <laughs> and I picked up like two lunch schedules just to get my foot in that door. Did, I made okay money, not enough to pay rent, but I was making money. <laughs> and I just hung in there and hung in there until I finally got on the night shift. So I was working there before the fire, and I worked after the fire. And I met my husband there, got married, had 38 wonderful years together. And if it wasn't for Peabody's, this little man here <laughs> and his older brother would not be with us. And uh, I owe so much to the restaurant and to these three girls that have just given me so many memories of their children babysitting and getting drunk and, <laughs> and coming, coming up with a game of who owned what house in Birmingham and how we would get there and like a Monopoly game for the Peabody girls' houses in Birmingham. And uh, like I said, I just, I love the family. I loved working there, had the best memories. And it will always be a part of my life. Someone else? Mr. Shipley, it's fine if we're dancing there every Friday and Saturday night. Hold on, it looks like we've got somebody over here. So remember, please say your name before you go. Do I have to? I'm one in three states. <laughs> no. I went to high school, I can't give my age away, with, played football, basketball, and baseball with Roger Sutton, but I don't want to give my age away. Roger's in Florida, I believe? Yes. Okay. And a couple years after I left Vietnam, my wife and I got married in November of 1975. November the 10th, which is a couple days ago, we got married the same day the Edmund Fitzgerald sank with 29 sailors, you're a history buff. But we spent a lot of our anniversaries at Peabody's. And I never forgot my anniversaries because Dick Purton would call that song every day by Gordon Lightfoot, the, right, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. And Roger, he used to, he worked long hours, didn't he? So, I brought the baseball coach there a couple times from when we went to high school together. He played for the Cincinnati Reds before Roger and I knew him, of course, and uh, Roger would always pick up the check. But um, I would always, we'd always go there on a coach's birthday, which was April 15th, income tax day. He was a cheap ass. <laughs> but, so I would, Roger, Roger would pick up the check and I made sure the server got a $20 tip. And the coach would say, he just couldn't believe I tipped somebody 20 bucks. I said, Roger just treated us with a $50 lunch. Come on, coach. He said, you shouldn't drink beer. I said, I'm not in high school anymore. Thank you. Oh, it looks like I see a finger waving over here. You're ready, huh? So remember, say your name. I'm Tom Shipley. <laughs> 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 
my wife and I had our office on Crooks Road. And we used to go to Detroit and all around to the restaurants. Uh, but on the way to from Crooks Road to Suffield where we lived, we had to go by and so we stopped and we liked what we saw and we kept going and going. And back in those days, they had a piano player. And after we had dinner, we'd ease back and sit down and listen to the guy play piano. And then after a while, we would dance a little. That was before you were supposed to dance. And uh, time passed, and they got, brought in other music and uh, jazz bands, and uh, we danced a lot. And then my wife died, and I was going there and every night and uh, dancing with whoever was there on Fridays and Saturdays. <laughs> and uh, I miss that place. Oh, that, 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 that was a phenomenal. And everybody wants to know, have you found another place? And I keep telling them, I wasn't looking for a place in the first place <laughs> when we found Peabody's. And uh, so <laughs> that's about all I can say. I'm Arden Shipley Monart. That's my dad. And I remember y'all when you first opened. And, but one of the best things were the birthday parties. Dad and I happened to share a same month birthday. I'm a, year, I'm a day older than he is though. <laughs> and we had our 30th and his 60th birthday up in the library. And that was amazing. Miss Piggy came for him, and my brother, bless his heart, had a stripper for me. <laughs> and I miss Peabody's a lot. So anniversaries were often um, uh, celebrated, or you used it to, as an excuse to go on tax day or when the Edmund Fitzgerald had sunk. Um, so someone had their hand up? Yes, ma'am. Pardon me. Pardon me. Leona Gates. We had many, many Fridays. The, the Smileys and the Gates would meet at Peabody's many Friday nights. But the biggest memory I have, well, we, we were out of town when the barn or restaurant burned, but we came back. We were out skiing in Colorado the next day, and that was so sad. When we went out, we our children settled all over the country. We had four children, four different, Florida, New York, Minnesota, uh, state of Washington. We'd go visit them. The last thing when we came home, is it time, is Peabody's open yet? We gotta stop at Peabody's no matter what we had on. On our travels, we'd stop at Peabody's for the, our first night home. It was wonderful. I miss it very much. Part of your family tradition? Yes. Uh, anyone else ready? Yeah. Do you have to stand up? Why do I stand up? That seems to be not the cool thing to do. My name is Rob Mueller. I was a bartender at Peabody's for about 15 years. Um, I'll make it short. I've been doing this about 40 years, and uh, I know I look like a teenager, but <laughs> I've, I've been doing it a long time. I've worked places where I've made more money, but never have I worked at a place where I was treated better, not only as a man, but as a human being, a father, just a person. Um, the girls encouraged vacations. They encouraged time off. That doesn't happen in this business. Uh, Nancy sold clothes for employees' kids. That doesn't happen in this business. Um, Mr. Shipley, uh, to, before I forget, a. A. Twinkle, twinkle Toes, <laughs> he, I was in the night before uh, I started working at Peabody's to meet some of the people, and this gentleman came up and tapped me on the shoulder and says, excuse me, young man, do you mind if I dance with your lady? Something along that line, and, and how do you tell him no? 
you don't tell him no. Anyway, I had to slip that in there. So um, the family is wonderful. Um, I've been a place or two since. Uh, I'm down the street at Redcoat, and to this day, I still have people say, "Do you see any of the Peabody girls? Do you see any of the family? Do you see every day, almost every day? I exaggerate a little bit, but wonderful family. Uh, I still consider those employees and the girls more than family. My work wife Andrea over here. Was, uh, she was there 41 years. Only job in the restaurant business. Can you imagine that in this day and age? She was a lot of fun. Anyway, love you girls. Thanks for listening to me. Rob. That's not saying much. <laughs> You're way too much. Um, I don't want to stand up. I'm Barbara Peabody, and um, I don't know what I want to say. It was all about family, and it was all about all of you. Um, it was the generations that we knew you. It was all of the birthday parties, wedding showers, baby showers. Um, Unfortunately, funerals, when they came, we felt that we needed to be there and be open when that happened. Um, it was always about the families and the people that kept us in business. It was about the um, allowing us to get rebuilt within six months and 20 days and all of the permits that would have taken forever. And the red tape, as Dick Christie well knows, um, Birmingham was very much behind us to get opened. Um, I was a nurse and I was living in Petoskey at the time, maybe two years after it opened, and Susan called one day. She said, I think I'm gonna move to Chicago with husband and daughter. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I know nothing about the restaurant business, but we can't leave dad alone. And I decided to move down to go into the restaurant business and I thank God every day that Susan did not leave that business. <laughs> it's like, because it would have never survived under my care. Um, Nancy came in just a couple years later and the three of us stayed in business. And many times people would say, how did you guys get along in the restaurant business? It's like, how did the three of you survive together? And my answer was always, it could, you couldn't have had three chiefs. It was one chief, and it was Susan. And her leadership got us through the years, and we all have her to thank. I mean, Nancy and I just followed in the footsteps and took marching orders, and we had our own little areas of expertise. Nancy, Dee Dee right here, did the Christmas decorations with Jan Bello, and we all know what the Christmas decorations at Peabody's did for all of us. It was our holiday, and every holiday, every November, I'm sure Nancy thanks God that <laughs> the restaurant is done and over with, but we all miss it so, so very much. I, um, you know, I can only say thanks to my sisters for the life that they provided for me, allowing me to raise a family, a special needs son, and it's really hard. As nice as it is, as it is being back in Birmingham, it's hard because it just, we wish it would have gone on forever and ever. It was interesting the day Community House, they unveiled the 2016 plan, and I was sitting next to my dad and they unveiled the 2016 plan and Peabody's restaurant was not there. Jack's car wash was not there either and darn it, they're still there, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> but I think they predicted the growth of the city and the kind of lack of parking. So as sorry as we are that we're not there, we just appreciate all of the years and all of you that made the restaurant, all of the employees that were never employees to us, they were family. That's the hardest, is not seeing the people day after day. And thank you. Thank you for the years.
know, I, I've been watching the Hallmark station. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> when Leslie called at one morning and she said, can you um, come up with something? It was like, oh my God, how do you come? <laughs> All those years. You do. You do. It's amazing. We miss you. Uh, I'm giving it to my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Put it that way. Okay. <laughs> that goes by where you think, God, I wonder if we need fish. I wonder if we need, you know what I mean? And we're always running. We were always running. Yes, we were always running for something. Pearl onions. <laughs> oh, my God. But it was all the background, all the stuff that went on. And you, you, we love doing that every day. It's the back of the house. It is. It is, it, it is, and it was a hand-in-hand -hand proposition. If, you know, there was, I always said there was nobody that was more important. Everybody had to be on the same page in order to make anything work. And if somebody, like, was in the weeds, like Susan would say, everybody would come in, get it done, and let's get going. And I think that was what made that business work. Chair. That, <laughs> she's the only one. I got it. You. I know, I know. That was it. Jerry, oh God, Jerry was there all the time. She start. When did you start? Sixty-three. In sixty-three, really? Before the restaurant was, yeah, 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 yeah. All I know is it was a. I hadn't worked with Jerry, and it was um, Dream Cruise, and she came in and she. I said, I know who you are, and she stood up and she said, I own this hostess stand and I thought <laughs> I thought oh my god I'm getting out of here <laughs> that was it so you know you did you had really really strong personalities and I think that was what dad's thing was was surround yourself with strong people and yeah being there every <laughs> night yeah. every night the family was there yeah we didn't were. let somebody else run it that made you guys. that was yeah. that, that was you don't see that much anymore. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Do you have anything you want to say? No, I'm just passing the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> I did a lot of Jerry. eating. Oh, oh Jerry. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like it's being... Yeah. Jerry does a lot of speak, but... Oh, yeah. That's you okay, know? just say that into the microphone, would you? You've never yeah. sure don't forget your name. I'm Jerry Nasher Matice. I was... So I met my husband at Peabody's. I worked at Peabody's for a number of years, and I left for a while. Then I came back for the last maybe five years, and it was my stand. I was the hostess. Was I? I worked with Nancy when I came back for the very first time. We had so much fun. I mean, it was, I really missed my job. I was the dark-haired sister, and I still, I'm out and about in town all the time, and people stop me and say, when are you when are you opening a new restaurant? I'm like, um, I'm not one of the sisters. I just they just called me a sister, but I'm really they all took off on me. I'm not opening any place, but no, it's a the best job I ever had. We had so much fun. We had great customers, Mr. Shipley, Mrs. Shipley. We remember all those stories, Mr. Shipley, don't we? God, we had great. You no, I wasn't bad. I mean, the Gradys were like customers from way back that. And every, the Gates and the Smileys. Oh, gosh. The Gates and Smileys were every Friday night yeah. and back yeah. in the bar corner booths. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, wait, there were tons, tons of great customers, and I had a. It was like being out. It wasn't a job. It was my home, and I was entertaining. It was just a, the best job ever, and I loved it, and I miss it. I'm going to talk about the, Judy Stuckey, the heart of Peabody's. I, another place I loved was Neighborhood Hardware. Mm -hmm. When they left us, what Peabody's did, tell what they did. I'm sorry? Tell what they did. Neighborhood Hardware? Yeah. Peabody's had a beautiful reception. It was. Oh, yeah, it was. Just, oh, I don't know about that. Maybe you could explain for... No, I can't. I'll cry. It's okay to cry. We're all crying. We're all crying. 
you want to tell no. them? <laughs> oh, go ahead. No. Oh, okay. You're, you're done. I am. But we but have no idea wonderful. what happened with neighborhood hardware. suggestion and boy he knew exactly what you wanted when they retired we had a retirement party and it was a great party oh absolutely hand in hand proposition that's it that's it here's another hostess with the most mm -hmm. oh <laughs> she's the other dark haired sister <laughs> Well, um, I'm going to start crying now. Um, I'm, I'm Jan Bello, and um, as irony would have it, Nancy and I both moved to Atlanta about a year ago, and so it's, it's really wonderful that we're together. But my husband and I used to be customers at Peabody's, and as the kids got older and we were empty nesters, we were there at least once a week, if not more. And um, my husband suddenly got sick and passed away. And um, I had just retired and from teaching. And the three girls came to the funeral and said to me, um, well, why don't you come on down you know, when you're feeling better and, and join us? Well, little did they know that before this time, my husband had said to me, why don't you go on down and you'd get along great with the girls. You go down and tell them you're available to help them out. And I said, they don't need me. So long story short is I started, my husband died in February, and I started in May. My very first day there, I came in for lunch, <laughs> to work the lunch <laughs> uh, meal, the lunch shift. And Susan was in the process of picking out paint colors for the outside of the restaurant. <laughs> so she said, Oh, Janny, you just go ahead and you just, you can handle this. I hadn't even been <laughs> trained or anything, but thank good they had such wonderful employees. Everybody helped out. Um, but as Jerry said, it became my social life after my husband passed, and I worked evenings because that was the hardest time of all. And um, I worked there until they closed, and now they, you know, they are like family. and. <laughs> Nancy and I live in Atlanta together, <laughs> so it's just there is yeah yeah, but it's wonderful. Oh yeah, I did. Making pie. I made, yeah, I was a home ec teacher, so Susan talked me into <laughs> making pies. So that was fun too. So that was a great, great time. Yeah, key lime. who worked or just like to go to Peabody's, like to stop in there for, you know, for good times. Yes. Uh, my name is Rosemary. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's probably one of the best jobs I ever had. It was probably one of the most menial jobs I ever had because I waitressed there. I had never waitressed before. Went into the bus or the trailer, whatever it was, and say, and I think Barbara hired me. It just is so many memories. You forgot to mention the New Year's Eve parties, which were just fabulous. We had as much, we had as much time, I think, as any of the employees, as any of the um, guests were, and we just enjoyed ourselves immensely. It was a great place to work. We worked very hard, though. I have to tell you, we really worked hard. And huh? I got pinched a lot, although I didn't meet any husbands there. I don't know why, but I didn't. I remember Jerry at the hostess stand. She would have to have the list, like with an iron fist, because people <laughs> would snatch it and put their names ahead of other people. So she would have to carry it around and never let it go. And, <laughs> and they... <laughs> I have the list out of my hand. There are tables upstairs. Don't you keep 
you Go talk. Away, well, you can talk. Yeah. Anyway, they were a great family. We had we worked very hard. I remember um, all of us helped each other. It's the best job I ever had, actually. I've told Barbara this. Maybe Susan. Um, it taught me a lot about customer service, and I know you probably used your social work degree to the nth degree because you could make very good money if you were sociable and happy to see the customers and had a good time, and we did. And um, I think it was the best job I ever had. I have to tell you, though, walking up those back stairs with a tray on your arm, I used to, I could never do that now because I'm old, but boy, it was, it, there was nothing to it back then. But uh, I thank the Peabody family. It's given me so many good memories. I talk about it all the time. I can't stand to go by the building where it used to be, and I, we drove by today, and I said, it's just not there. It's just not the same. But anyway, we had a great time. I think I started right after the fire, so that was a long time ago, long time ago. Susan, I think you're the one who hasn't really spoken into the microphone yet. <laughs> I don't know if I need a microphone. I just want to say thank you so much. We are so honored and so humbled. You know, really, it was just, you know, it was just, and, and I would like to say another couple words about Roger Sutton, who some of you in this room don't know. He was, he was our chef for 29 years, and he was truly a big, big part of the success of Peabody's, you know, it was his food, you know, he really, and it was every part of the restaurant, you know, when he left and I <laughs> took on the job and ended up with the job of being the property manager and realized this is a big piece of property and a big building that's starting to get old and, you know, Roger Sutton was just, he was the one that started Christmas decorations, he was the one that, you know, instituted so many things around Peabody's, you know. And we all just learned so much from him. He and my dad were, they were very close. And it was, um, it just made for just a, um, they, Northwood we, Inn. yeah, Northwood Inn. And Roger, Roger did not open with us. He came like 10 months later and never left till he retired. And it was just, but the other thing I would just like to speak to is just the generations. There are people in this room, Barry King, the Ike family, that there so many of you, you know, we watched at least three generations. There were little kids that grew up and then brought their kids that came to work with us. It was just that generations that that, you know, in our own families that we raised. You know, when our kids talk about the restaurant, and Nancy has two, Barbara has three, I have three, do I have three? Yep. <laughs> um, you know, when our kids get together and those memories of, you know, the restaurant, the same as so many of your families that were just, it was great to see everybody come through that. And there, you know, there is another little restaurant. It happens to be in Bayfield, Colorado, which is about 15 miles from Durango, Colorado. It's called Mill Street Bistro. But um, there is Peabody's food being served there. They're two hours earlier, so it's right now, tonight. She's, it, so there is, you just have to come a little farther <laughs> for some Peabody's food, but she is, it's the same good food, so. You know, Peabody's did go on. You just have to go west. <laughs> yeah. But, but really, the generations that were just so humbled and appreciative of everything this community did for all of us. You know, all of us in this room, but certainly our family. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. My name is Barry King, and you can see from what I'm wearing tonight that I've known Jim for some time. And I was glad to hear the notice about his red car from one of the ladies over there because he wasn't any place without the red car except one morning he didn't have it for breakfast and didn't know where it was. Uh, I still haven't found a replacement for, for Peabody's. 
we Depression babies enjoyed that food. It didn't, wasn't spoiled by a lot of the juice that these new people put on their meals. And uh, the story that I really remember about Jim is on one Halloween, one of the waiters had a Gestapo uniform. And a uh, lady went up to Jim and said she was very disappointed in that, and I kind of shared her view. Jim said, well, I don't know where you were in 1945, but I was in Berlin. <laughs> and uh, that, that, that statement I've remembered ever since it happened. And uh, most of the guys that I, I was there with regularly aren't around anymore, so I have to speak for all of them. But we, we enjoyed being at Peabody's. And some days you had to be there four or five nights a week. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, one more back there. And um, uh, who has the book right now? Okay. Are there, how many people can you sh uh, show me a, uh, your hands if you still haven't signed it but want to? Okay, so it's got to make its way that way. And that's where the mic uh, microphone's going too. I think we've all heard about what family Peabody's was to everybody and great food and great times, but I just want to also acknowledge how generous this family was, and it still probably is. Um, they would have fundraisers. At 9-11, I was working the concession stand at Sea Home for our son's uh, soccer games, and we had the firemen come over with their boots and we filled the boots with money to donate to the 911 cause and Peabody's matched it without a question. And that's just the kind of girls these are and the kind of family they are, that they were very generous to the community, to their kids, to their employees. And um, thank you for the generosity of everything you guys done for the community and for all of us. I just want to close with one thing. Speaking of people and, and going way back, but um, Dolph and Milt were two of the most integral people, I think, at the very beginning there, along with Howard Miller before Roger, but um, probably the most lasting um, person that I will always, always have a soft spot for that made me a better person, um, understanding the difficulties in life and what he went through and an inspiration he was by James Dolick. <laughs> He's a young man that worked in the back kitchen forever and was one great, great young man. So he's no longer with us. <laughs> So um, that's, we'll have to wrap up at some point. Uh, there could be many more memories and lots more opportunities to share, but we, we have to stop somewhere. I think this is a good place to stop. Let me just tell you, we will be uh, creating a, a, a the, using the slides and the um, audio, we're going to create a, uh, a video recording that we'll make available to uh, free uh, to the public, the library will have it, um, and it's, I have to thank uh, the uh, Bloomfield, Birmingham Bloomfield Cable TV because they do all the production. So can we have a sh uh, hand, a show of hands for them? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, they're the quiet people in the back that record some of this stuff so that it can go on into the future. Um, can you believe a restaurant in Birmingham, Michigan that is in business for 29 years? That's a pretty high bar. I don't think there are restaurants right now that make it more than just a few years. 41 is a restaurant. 41, pardon me. Where did I get 29 from? Somebody said 29. Oh, that's what it was. 41 then. It's even longer. I think my point being, there's something about Peabody's 
uh, and you've been talking about it tonight, and, and what I get from it is it was um, home away from home. It was always open, always there for you, always ready for you, always wanting you to come in and enjoy your time there. That was what they were all about, and that helped, I'm presuming, I mean, I'm reading into it, it helped the, the family feel like they were doing what they needed to do. They were filling that role, which was so needed, and there really isn't another business doing that right now that I'm aware of. I mean, there are places people like to go, but there, there is no more Peabody's, and that's because there's only one Peabody family, and there's only one group who came together following in Jim's culture and continuing doing the right thing for all the people who came, all the people who worked there, and that's precious, and it's worth remembering, and I think uh, that makes it special, um, in, in not just in Birmingham, but really anywhere. Anywhere you could find that. So what is the name of the restaurant in Colorado? Mill Street Bistro. Mill Street Bistro. In, um, you said it's in Bayfield. in Bayfield, Colorado, is now serving, <laughs> is now serving some of the Peabody meals. Okay. So um, with that, I, I think we'll close here. And what you do after this, in a social sense. I don't know what that will be, but um, the night is still young. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you.